So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another class of PIB 247. My name is Manish Mishra and in today's class we will be talking about the PIB news from 8th to 10th of June 2023. All right and now uh, less than one month is left for the RBA grade B phase one. So please gear up your preparation now and just focus on the phase one of your examination. Right now you should just focus on phase one. Phase two ke baare mein baad mein baad karenge 9th July ke baad. Okay. So let's start with the today's class and let's talk about the very first question which says cabinet committee on economic affairs has approved the continuation of central sector scheme of exploration of coal and lignite scheme with an estimated expenditure of dash from dash right so you need to fill the gaps so the cabinet committee on economic affairs has approved the continuation of central sector scheme of exploration of coal and lignite scheme and as the name suggests this scheme talks about the exploration of coal and lignite right and the objective why this uh, you know why this scheme has been extended so that is for estimating the coal resources which are available in the nation in order to prepare detailed project reports so that we can start the coal mining right the continued duration is the 15 finance commission period that is 21 22 to 25 26 with an estimated expenditure of 2980 crores okay the exploration will be done in two categories. Number one is the promotional exploration with the total outlay of 1650 crores. The area covered will be 1300 kilometers square. And the second uh, category will be the detailed exploration in non Coal India Limited blocks, right? Coal India Limited blocks, mein Coal India Limited hi apna exploration karega. This scheme is for non Coal India Limited blocks, right? The second category, the total outlay is 1330 crores and the area, area that will be covered is 650 kilometers square. This is a quite a technical scheme. So you don't have to go into the details of this scheme. Whatever they have provided in PIB, that is uh, more than enough for your exam. Okay. So what is the total expenditure? That's 2980 crores and the, uh, you know, the, the period is 2122 to 2526. Okay. So what will be the correct answer then? Option D. 2980 crore 21 22 25 26. Let's talk about question number two. Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has the, approved the increase in MSP for all mandated Kharif crops for this marketing season 23 24. Very important question for the Navad aspirants. Which of the following crops are having estimated margin to farmers over their cost of production greater than 50% in this Kharif season? Right. So the cabinet committee on economic affairs has approved the increase in MSP for all these Kharif crops, Kharif crops jitni bhi hai. Now uh, you must be wondering that do you have to remember all these uh, rates. So dekho waise to aapko yaad rakhne ki zarurat nahi hai but I would suggest you to read it 3-4 times so that if in any case they ask you in the examination you would be able to mark the correct answer. Thikha? But at least you should know which Kharif crops for which Kharif crops the rates have been announced. At least you should know that. So these are paddy common, jowar, hybrid, bajra, ragi, maize, tur, or arar, moong, urad, groundnut, uh, groundnut, sunflower seed, soya bean, sesamum, niger seed, and cotton. Now you don't have to remember it word by word. Aapko isko cram karne ki zarurat nahi hai, bilkuli ratta marne ki zarurat nahi hai. Just read it three, four times. You would be able to mark the answer in the examination. Theke? So don't you worry about that. Now this MSP increase in this recovery uh, marketing season in is, is in line with the union budget announcement of 2018-19 where the government announced that they will be fixing MSP at least 1.5 times of all India weighted average cost of production, right? And this time the expected margin to farmers over the cost of production is estimated to be highest in case of Bajra that is 82%. In Tur it will be 58%. In Soyabean it will be 52% and in Ural it will be 51%. And in rest of the crops, the margin will be at least 50%. 50% yaus se kam. Okay? So that is all about this news. So the question is about those crops which will be having margin greater than 50%. So these are Bajra, Tur, Soya Bean and I believe the fourth one is Urad. So what, what will be the correct answer? 1, 2 and 3, option C. Right? Option C is the correct answer. Let's talk about question number 3. Again an important question which ministry or ministries have launched. Mission on advanced and high impact research, which in short they are calling as Mahir scheme to quickly identify emerging technologies in the power sector and develop them indigenously at scale for development within and outside the country. 
right so the ministries are ministries of ministry of power and ministry of new and renewable uh, renewable energy and both ministries are headed by mr rk singh rajkumar singh is the minister okay so uh, the name of the mission is mahir that is mission on advanced and high impact research now as the name suggests the scheme is all about identifying the emerging technologies in the power sector and developing them indigenously so that uh, we can develop a robust manufacturing ecosystem in the power sector in the country okay so it is all about the research in the power sector right objectives you don't have to remember word to word just give a brief read to the objective and that's enough to identify emerging technologies for global power sector and take up indigenous end to end development of relevant technologies right to provide common platform for power state uh, power sector stakeholders so that they can uh, you know share their ideas they can uh, collectively brainstorm uh, in the uh, uh, regarding the ideas in the power sector to support pilot projects of indigenous technologies developed specially by the indian startups and facilitate their commercialization and market entry and also to leverage the foreign alliances and partnerships to accelerate research and development in the power sector all right the funding will be from the financial resources of both the ministries and the cpscs under them and any additional funding required will be mobilized from the government of india's budgetary support the duration will be from this financial year to financial year 28 that is for the period of 5 years and the eight identified areas are alternative to lithium ion storage batteries which are creating a lot of e waste in the environment which are cancerous in nature modifying electric cookers or pans to suit indian cooking methods green hydrogen for mobility so that we can use hydrogen as a fuel in our vehicles carbon capture geothermal energy solid state refrigeration nanotechnology for ev battery and indigenous crgo technology now again you don't have to remember all these identified areas one by one just read it once theek hai now there are two committees under it under the mission number one is technical scoping committee which will be chaired by the chairperson of central electricity authority this committee will identify ongoing and emerging research areas globally and this committee will recommend the potential technologies that can be used for development under the mission and then there will be an apex committee which will be headed by the union minister for power and new and renewable energy currently both the same it will deliberate on technology and products to be developed and approve the research proposals right so that is all about mahir and which ministries are these ministry of power and new and renewable energy the correct answer will be option d a and b let's talk about question number 4 The eighth meeting of the Standing Committee of International Solar Alliance has been held in New Delhi in hybrid format. ISA is guided by towards thousand strategy, which does not include which of the following options. ठीक है जी. So this was the eighth meeting of the Standing Committee of ISA, and it took place in New Delhi in hybrid format. It was held under the chair of India, which is currently the president of ISA, and it was co-chaired by France, which is currently the co-president of ISA. Now during the meeting. the discussions were done in four areas number 1 isa demonstration projects in the isa member countries number 2 isa star c which is solar technology application resource center number 3 isa solar x startup challenge and number 4 isa solar finance facility right the details of these projects are not at all required for your examination theek okay? hai now talking about isa so remember the objective of isa is guided towards 1000 strategy which aims to install 1000 gigawatt of solar energy capacity mobilize 1000 uh, uh, dollar 1000 billion dollars of investment in solar energy solutions by 2030 deliver energy access to 1000 million people using clean energy solution and also to mitigate global solar emissions to the tune of 1000 million tons of co2 every year these things these objectives you can very much use in your descriptive answers if there would be any answer if there would be any question in esi relating to renewable energy right so you can write uh, these objectives of isa right isa it is uh, the headquarters are in gurugram haryana and it was conceptualized on the side lines of 21st cop of un triple fc which took place in paris in the year 2015 Currently, there are 93 member countries and 115 signatory countries, and all member states of UN 
यूनाइटेड नेशन आर एलिजिबल टू ज्वाइन इट ठीक है एंड दीज आर सम ऑफ द इनिशियटिव ऑफ आई एस ए नंबर वन सोलर फाइनेंस फेसिलिटी विच सपोर्ट डेवलपमेंट ऑफ बैंकेबल सोलर प्रोजेक्ट एंड स्टिमुलेटिंग फाइनेंसिंग थ्रू फाइनेंसिंग व्हीकल नंबर टू इज सोलर एक्स ग्रैंड चैलेंज विच हेल्प इन इंक्यूबेटिंग सोलर स्टार्टअप बाय हैंड होल्डिंग दिम टू गिव एक्सेस टू मैन्युफैक्चर सप्लायर्स एंड इन्वेस्टर्स देन वी हैव अनदर इनिशिएटिव दैट इज सोलर टेक्नोलॉजी एप्लीकेशन रिसोर्स सेंटर विच इज अ सेंटर विच फंक्शन एज ट्रेनिंग सेंटर्स एंड इट विल ऑल्सो एक्ट एज इट ऑल्सो एक्ट एज द सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस फॉर टेस्टिंग डेवलपमेंट ऑफ स्पेसिफिकेशन एंड स्टैंडर्ड्स and then we have one world some one sun one world one grid initiative which is aimed at achieving the global access to ele- electricity all right so that is all about isa and let's come back to the question so which does not include install 1000 gigawatt of solar energy capacity it is there mobilize 1000 billion dollar of investment in solar energy solutions by 2030 ab sahi hai deliver energy access to 1000 million people using clean energy solution that is also there mitigate global solar solar emissions to to the tune of 1000 million tons of co2 everywhere ye bhi theek hai to yahi hona chahiye replace 1000 million conventional vehicles with electrical vehicles powered by solar energy this is incorrect the correct answer will be option e because we need to identify which of the following is not the part of objectives of isa so option e is the correct answer right let me rub all this and let me clearly mention here the correct answer the correct answer is what the correct answer is option e all right question number 5 pe aa jate hain very very important question pakka aa raha hai aapke exam mein question taiyar ho jao consider the following statements with respect to the fifth edition of state food safety index which is released by fssai food safety and standards authority of india and you need to identify the incorrect statements theek hai ji to chalo so food safety and standard authority of india has released the fifth state food safety index on the world food safety day now the objective of this index is to foster healthy competition in food safety ecosystem throughout the country right this index assesses the performance of states on various parameters of food safety ye food safety ke alag alag parameters pe states ki performance ko assess karta hai the first edition was released in the year 2019 the states are categorized are classified into 3 Large states, uh, there are twenty states in 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 this category. Small states, eight states are there. Union territories, eight eight all the eight UTs are there, and these are the parameters based on which the states are assessed. Number one, human resources and institutional data. Eighteen percent weightage is given to this parameter. Compliance, twenty eight percent. Food testing, uh, testing, infrastructure and surveillance, seventeen percent. Training and capacity building, eight percent. consumer empowerment 19% and improvement in sf si ranking 10% right and the maximum you can see the parameter the maximum weightage is given to the compliance all right now sf si is state food safety index of course now these are the winners and i have provided the top 3 because rbi these days are asking uh, top 3 bottom mein bhi puch raha hai wo to isliye top 3 aapko at least yaad pata hone chahiye So in the category of Union Territories, Jammu and Kashmir is at the top, followed by Delhi and Chandigarh with the scores 59.5, 49.5 and 45 respectively. All right. The areas of achievement be यहाँ पे given है that Jammu and Kashmir has performed very well in the food safety compliance area. Delhi has performed well in training and capacity building, and Chandigarh in consumer empowerment. Talking about the small states. so goa manipur and sikkim are the top 3 with the score of 51 40 and 39.5 the areas of achievement include goa consumer empowerment food safety compliance manipur and human resources and institutional data sikkim talking about the last states so kerala which is at number 1 followed by punjab and tamil nadu the scores are 63 57.5 and 56.5 respectively and the areas of achievement are food testing infrastructure for kerala food safety compliance punjab and consumer empowerment tamil nadu now if anyone asks you which state or ut has the highest score overall the answer would be kerala because that has the score of 63 jo ki sabse zyada hai all right now during the event the winners for eat right challenge at district level were also announced total 260 districts participated and out of uh, this number 
31 वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट हैव स्कोर्ड सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट एंड अब मार्क्स राइट एंड द टॉप फाइव डिस्ट्रिक्ट आर दीज एंड येस यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर द टॉप फाइव कोयम्बटोर ऑफ तमिलनाडु द स्कोर वॉज वन नाइनटी सिक्स भोपाल मध्य प्रदेश विद स्कोर ऑफ वन नाइनटी थ्री वाराणसी उत्तर प्रदेश मालदा वेस्ट बंगाल एंड ग्वालियर अगैन मध्य प्रदेश सो फ्रॉम मध्य प्रदेश वी हैव टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट भोपाल एंड ग्वालियर राइट नाउ ड्यूरिंग द इवेंट अ पोर्टल राफ्ट पोर्टल वॉज ऑल्सो लॉन्च राफ्ट इज रैपिड फूड टेस्टिंग किट राफ्ट एक्चुअली इज अ स्कीम विच वॉज लॉन्च इन टू थाउजेंड एंड नाइनटीन टू एनकरेज एडोप्शन ऑफ एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजीज फॉर फूड टेस्टिंग स्क्रीनिंग एंड सर्वेलेंस पर्पजेस राइट so the objective of this portal is to streamline the operation of this scheme which was launched in 2019 thereby ensuring transparency and accountability right it will allow the applicants to apply for approval online and all the steps from application processing to certificate issuance and renewable will now be conducted through this portal only all right so that is all about this news guys and let's identify the incorrect statement it has been released by niti ayog on the occasion of world food safety day to pehla hi answer galat ho gaya this is the correct answer guys to this question option a it has not been released by niti ayog but by fssai theek hai question number 6 pe aa jate hain national program for prevention and control of cancer diabetes cardiovascular disease and stroke program has now been renamed as national program for prevention and control of communication communicable diseases to subsume all types of ncds under its ambit it is being implemented by ministry of health and family welfare under nhm to address the growing burden of non communicable diseases in the india when was this mission when was this program launched theek hai so is program ke bare mein sari information aapko na question pe mil gayi actually but why was this program in news this program guys it is in news because the ministry of health and family welfare headed by Mansukh Mandavia, who is also the Minister of Chemical and Fertilizers, has organized a capacity-building webinar on non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases. Now, this webinar was organized to empower the medical officers, which are posted in primary health centers, community health centers, and district hospitals. Now, why this is important? Because this seminar or webinar, it was organized under the National Program for Prevention and Control of NCDs, which is important for us, right? Now talking about this program, so this program was launched in the year two thousand and ten to address the growing burden of NCDs. It was initially launched as National Program for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular Diseases, and Stroke Program, but later it was named as National Program for Prevention and Control of NCDs. It is being implemented by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare under the National Health Mission. National Health Mission के अंदर ये work करता है. now this program seeks to promote preventive measures ensure early detection of ncds provide effective management and improve the overall health and well being of the population as a part of this program ncd cells are being established at national state and district levels and ncd clinics are also being set up at district and community health centers level so that the services for early diagnosis treatment and follow up for the non communicable diseases can be provided all right <clears throat> so that is all about it and when it was launched 2010 option a is the correct answer question number 7 which of the following is not amongst the five important decisions taken by uh, taken with respect to pscs by ministry of agriculture uh, sorry by ministry of cooperation and ministry of chemical fertilizers to realize government's vision of sahkar se samriddhi so five important decisions have been taken with for uh, the pscs primary agricultural credit societies which are number 1 pscs the primary agriculture credit society which are not functioning as fertilizers retailers they will be identified and they will be encouraged to function as retailers in a phased manner retailers for what fertilizer retailers theek okay? hai number 2 pscs which are not currently functioning as pradhan mantri kisan samriddhi kendras they will be encouraged they will be brought under the ambit of pradhan mantri krishi samriddhi kendras PSCS will be connected with marketing of organic fertilizers, especially the fermented organic manure or liquid fermented organic manure or phosphate enriched organic manure. Okay. Decision number four: the PSCS will also be included as wholesalers or retailers in supply 
एंड मार्केटिंग चेन ऑफ बायो ऑर्गेनिक फर्टिलाइजर्स अंडर एमडीए स्कीम वट इज एमडीए मार्केट डेवलपमेंट असिस्टेंस स्कीम दिस स्कीम इज बींग इम्प्लीमेंटेड बाय द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर्स एंड अंडर इट फर्टिलाइजर्स कंपनी एक्ट एज एन एग्रीगेटर फॉर स्मॉल बायो ऑर्गेनिक प्रोड्यूसर्स टू मार्केट द एंड प्रोडक्ट्स जो जितने भी स्मॉल बायो ऑर्गेनिक प्रोड्यूसर्स हैं उनके लिए जो फर्टिलाइजर कंपनी है वो एग्रीगेटर का काम करती है एंड दे मार्केट देयर प्रोडक्ट्स इन द मार्केट राइट बिकॉज दे द स्मॉल बायो ऑर्गेनिक प्रोड्यूसर्स दे डू नॉट हैव इनफ रिसोर्सेज और इनफ चैनल्स टू मार्केट देयर प्रोडक्ट्स सो हेयर द फर्टिलाइजर कंपनी एक्ट एज द एग्रीगेटर्स टू मार्केट दी एंड प्रोडक्ट एंड नाउ पी एस सी एस विल बी डूइंग दैट एंड फाइनली द पी एस सी एस कैन ऑल्सो बी एम्प्लॉयड एज ड्रोन ऑन्टरप्रेनर्स फॉर स्प्रेइंग फर्टिलाइजर्स एंड पेस्टिसाइड्स ठीक है जी so that is all about it <clears throat> let's identify which is not among the five important decisions pscs which are not functioning as fertilizer retailers will be identified and encouraged to function as retailers correct pscs which are not currently function as pm ksk will be brought under its ambit ye bhi theek hai pscs will be corrected with marketing of organic fertilizer ye bhi theek hi lag raha hai pscs Uh, will now act as wholesalers or retailers in supply and marketing chain of bio organic fertilizers under nutrient based subsidy scheme nahi ye wali line galat hai it will be act, uh, you know the pscs will act as wholesaler or retailers in supply and marketing chain of bio organic fertilizers under mda scheme market development assistance so this will be the correct answer option d and let's move ahead to the questions in short but before that if you want to have the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel The link is provided in the description. Question number eight: Which ministry in association with Meta, the parent company of Facebook, actually now the fa uh, now Facebook is Meta only, has launched Amrit Generation campaign to empower and engage the youth of India by encouraging them to express their aspirations and dreams for the future? Very important question. This ministry in question is headed by Smriti Rani, and hence the correct answer is Ministry of Women and Child Development. Which organization has launched national campaign addition free Amrit Tal on the occasion of World Tobacco Day with the aim to promote healthier and addiction free India? ठीक है जी कौन सा organization था ये? The organization is question is NCPCR that's National Commission for Protection of Child Right and it was organized in technical partnership with Citizen Group Tobacco Free India. All right. Question number ten. Union Cabinet has approved the third revival package for BSNL. With the total outlay of uh, how much crores, which includes allotment of 4G or 5G spectrum for BSNL through equity infusion, with this authorized capital of BSNL has increased to what? So the very first revival package of BSNL was announced in 2019 was worth 69,000 crores. After that, in 2022, 1.64 lakh crores, and now in 2023, 93,945 crores. Ninety three thousand nine forty five crores, and with this, the authorized capital of BSNL will increase to two lakh crores, right? And with with all these revival packages, the BSNL, uh, the BSNL, uh, the the losses, the losses are going down, and the BSNL is recovering from its, uh, you know, जो उसकी जर्जर वाली कंडीशन थी, what you call it, uh, उससे वो इम्प्रूव कर रहा है, right? Question number eleven: Which state or UT will be covered under the seventh phase of Sagar Parikrama Yatra conducted by Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry, and Dairy? The seventh phase of Sagar Parikrama Yatra will be conducted in Kerala in Lakshadweep. The correct answer will be option D. Very important question again. Sagar Parikrama sir, I believe question आना चाहिए. Not A and B, sorry. A and C will be the correct answer. Kerala in Lakshadweep है. Let me erase all this. The correct answer will be option E, A, and C. Kerala and Lakshadweep. Where has the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy organized an event titled "Women in Renewable Energy: A Dialogue on Policy, Technology, Skilling, and Finance on the Occasion of World Environment Day?" Right. So, World Environment Day, we all know, was observed on 5th of June, and every year it is observed on 5th of June. So, it was organized in New Delhi. The correct answer is option B. Where has NTPC School of Business organized Indo Indo Scandinavian Leadership Conference and Workshop? NTPC School of Business organized it in its Noida campus, and the correct answer is Noida, which is in Gautam Buddh Nagar district of Gautam Buddh Nagar district of Uttar Pradesh. I believe you all know this. 
India currently ranks as the world's dash largest producer of crude steel. India is the second largest producer of crude steel followed by China and the correct answer therefore is option B. Under National Steel Policy 2017, India has set the targets of achieving the total crude steel capacity of 300 million tons per annum and the, therefore the correct answer is option E, 300 million tons per annum. Question number 16, very important, Global Biofuel Alliance is one of the priorities under India's G20 presidency. With which country or countries is India working to develop this alliance? The India is, uh, you know, collaborating with Brazil and USA to develop this alliance and the correct answer is option D. Question number 17, which of the following agencies is organizing exhibition entitled Hamari Bhasha Hamara, Hamari Virasat under the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav? So the agency is the National Archives of India which has organized this exhibition. Hamari Bhasha Hamari Virasat. Our language, our heritage in English. For the first time in the history of independent India, the turnover of KVIC, Khadi and Village Industries Commission products has crossed dash in financial year 22-23. So this has crossed a whooping 1.34 lakh crores, right? So it is an important question. The correct answer is option A. All right, guys, so that is all for today's class. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next class on Wednesday. And this week, I will be conducting a session on G20, all the initiatives of G20, India's presidency. All right, so stay tuned. I will see you in that session. Goodbye, take care and God bless.